How's that? Is that is that a nice area for you, Devin? Pretty. Okay, so we're doing a story time trap card. Words are cheese, spoon, slimy, Doritos, tub. Okay. Radio. And radio. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So this is uh, this is a story right after I I stopped going to college. Um, I got out of college and I was going to go back to the military and I had I had about six months of downtime before the the military would would take me. And during that time, I was trying to exercise a lot and, and work out um, uh, because of you know boot camp and and so on and so forth. And I, I think I lived in. New Mexico at the time. Um, so, in New Mexico, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but there are a lot of very large satellite dishes. And these satellite dishes are, of course, uh, part of the search for extraterrestrial uh, intelligence, um, you know, the SETI organization. And I used to live in an old kind of two-story house where I was renting up the uh, upstairs room, which I couldn't actually get to most of the time uh, because I'm so fat I couldn't get up the stairs. Uh, you know, standard standard stuff. But the guy who lived below me, uh, name is Frank, was a ham radio operator. And he used to try and ping signals off the SETI guy's satellites for fun. He was basically just a troll. Um, one night... Uh, Frank is sitting down there and he's, you know, spinning the little ham radio dial and, and going crazy and he's having fun with it. And uh, there's this loud screeching noise that I can hear coming from downstairs. And, of course, I don't know what the hell is going on. Uh, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I wake up and I go to the door, and I open the door, and then I immediately realize I'm too fat to fit through the door. So, of course, we have a, a whale door that's been installed. Um, luckily, we have friends that work at SeaWorld, and they put one in for me on the second floor. And I open it up. It's, it's a little hand crank lever that you have to operate. It's very tedious. Uh, it's really annoying. I hated that door. God, that door sucked. Anyway, so I go outside, and I roll off the roof, and down onto the ground and just then I realize that even though it's two o'clock in the morning it seems as if it's daytime it's incredibly bright and I mean way way too bright for the time of day that it, it normally should be and I can hear Frank screaming from his you know rickety uh, fr from inside his his rickety um, screen door and it's you know every three seconds because it's kind of windy outside and you know there's a bunch of pine trees around us if you can imagine that in New Mexico which is mainly desert which is very odd but we lived in a, a little you know canyon that actually had a lot of um, you know kind of water come down so anyway I try to go in and see through the door what's going on and I can hear Frank screaming and just about that time I can start making out what Frank is saying and he's saying Dear God, they're after me. They've found me. And I said, who? Who found you? Who found you? What are they after? And just then, Frank slings open the door, and he runs out, and is immediately sucked into my fat, because, of course, Frank immediately doesn't understand the fact that my fat tries to eat anything that gets near it. It's kind of like one of those, you know, man-eating plants. So, I... Exhale very deeply and expel Frank from the cocoon that is now created in my fat. And he's covered in slime uh, and cheese from my body that it creates. It's just kind of a natural thing. And he points up with a shaking finger and he goes, Them! They're the ones trying to find me. And just then I look up and I can see this craft above us. And I grab Frank with my knurled little fat fingers and I go, what have you done? And he says, I don't know. And a beam comes down from the craft and envelops me. And I'm very frightened, so I begin to shake. 
And we all know what happens when I get nervous. I inflate like a puffer fish. And I get very sweaty. And I begin to levitate off the ground. And I levitate about an inch off the ground for probably a good 30 seconds before I'm actually put back down on the ground. And then I can hear a bunch of complaining and whining noises coming from above me in the craft. And then the beam becomes much stronger and the light gets brighter. I guess they had it on like pick up normal sized person, you know, and obviously that's not going to get me off the ground. So they had to increase the intensity of the beam to pick me up. And I dropped Frank and I began to rise up and little bits of dirt and grass around me also began to rise up. And I started to head towards this big bright white light above me. And I could see that these doors had opened, these big mechanical doors had opened, and I was heading for it. And so I put my hands above my head in horror, and I stopped. And then again I could hear them complaining, because they still didn't have the beam strong enough. And so they had to increase the intensity a, th a third time to get me the final five feet. I, w I was pretty close at that point. And they started to reach out. All these little tiny three-fingered hands were reaching out through this door trying to, to grab me. And my head went up through the portal and I could see this, you know, large white ship, much larger than you would have imagined that it was on the inside. And at that point, I could feel these sharp pokes coming from underneath me. And that's when I realized that they had left the beam intensity so high that it was picking up trees from the surrounding area. And they were beginning to jab me in the ass all over repeatedly like small little rifles of wood shooting into my anus. And it was very painful and I did not like it. So I began to yell at them. And I began to make motions with my hands and butter and grease and fat slung off my hands into their faces. And they began to cower away from me. And it was at that time that I become lodged in the actual ship itself. And I guess there was a small defect in the ship where the door was not in the middle of their ship. It was slightly to the right. And so the ship began to lean. It began to list to one side. And you could hear the engines on the ship, the magnetic whatever, spooling up with energy as it tried to correct itself. And somebody kept hitting the big red looking button, which I can only imagine should have said on it, drop fat guy. But obviously they don't have buttons because everybody talks about, you know, they don't have write on things because everybody's telepathic. So everybody knows everything about everything. And when they're aliens, you know, I can only assume they were aliens and unless they were other kind of more advanced creatures that like subterraneans, I guess. I don't know. And the ship began to list, and the guy was repeatedly pressing the button, but it was too late. My armpit fat had lodged above the opening, and so now I was stuck. And so now they were hitting me and kicking me and trying to push at me as the ship began to list more and more and more. And finally they managed to free me from the ship, but it was too late. Because they had set their engines on full on one side of the ship, they quickly rolled over like I mean like a thousand times I could see it as I was falling like thousands of spinning revolutions of silver <sighs> right above me like a firecracker going off and it slammed into the ground and into the trees and I landed on the ground and I rolled over and there was fire everywhere and I didn't know what to do and so I I just kind of sat there for a moment because I can't really sit up. Once I've landed on my back, I'm pretty much done at that point because my arms are actually too short to reach the ground to roll me over. So I'm stuck. I'm just stuck. And there's fire around me and there's little aliens that are dying all over the place. And I felt so bad for them. Do, do you know what, what dead, dying aliens sound like? horrible screams like you stepped on like a cat's tail it's terrible it's it's really really horrible 
And so the FBI showed up and a bunch of CIA agents, lots of people showed up and they packed up all the little bits of ship and all the little aliens, including one or two of which I still believe to this day were alive, and they took them away. And I was told never, ever, ever to do that again. And I said, I didn't even do anything. And they said, apparently, they thought you were a new planet or some kind of agent, like a tumor that was in, in, infesting the Earth. So they came to investigate you. And I said, how do you know that? And he just said, Shh. and he left however they were at least nice enough to remove the two by fours and splinters out of my ass before they left that by the way was not caused by the aliens and they were nice enough to hook a tow truck underneath to my uh, arm hair and drag me over that way I could at least stand up and then they left and it was terrible I cried for hours. And you know what happened at the end of the day when I finally took it all in and I had a moment to myself, I realized I'd landed on Frank. 